Welcome to the Excellence in Church Administration podcast, informing, encouraging, and supporting your church. Your hosts are Michael Martin and Dan Busby from ECFA. Hi, this is Michael Martin, and we are so excited to have you with us for another Excellence in Church Administration podcast by ECFA. Well, as we begin the new year and tax season is upon us once again, we're kicking off season two of the podcast with five tax saving tips for pastors. We're also going to have a second podcast releasing this month as part two in the series, Three Church Reporting Refreshers, and we, we hope you tune into that one as well. Well, last year, our coverage of minister's tax and church reporting issues was some of our most popular. We had thousands of church leaders that were tuning in, so I'm really looking forward to kicking off another great conversation today with my friends from ECFA, Dan Busby and Von Alau. How are you doing today? Hey, good to be with you, Michael. Thanks for having us. All right. Well, hey, I'm so excited for this conversation here. Dan and Vanna, along with our colleague John, have helped co-author our latest annual tax guide update, Minister's Taxes Made Easy, which you'll hear more about later as a free resource from ECFA. So I've really been thinking the timing of this podcast is perfect for a couple of reasons. First, not just because it's tax season, but also because of, you may have heard of the passage of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. This massive federal law is the first time that Congress has done a major overhaul of the tax code, if you can believe it, since when Ronald Reagan was president back in 1986. So today we're going to highlight a few of the important changes for taxpayers and connect you with some additional resources from ECFA to help you stay in the loop on tax reform as well. But without further ado, we promised to uh, cover today five tax saving tips for pastors, and we're going to get started with that, jumping right into our first uh, tax saving tip for pastors. Dan, maybe you can start, uh, kick us off here by telling us a little bit about expense reimbursements. Yes, Michael, uh, by way of uh, just quick background, uh, pastors often incur church-related out-of-pocket expenses in the course of a calendar year, Uh, perhaps hundreds or even thousands of dollars of expenses, especially when one considers church-related mileage driven using a personal vehicle. Um, The goal should be for the church to reimburse these expenses under what we generally call an accountable expense reimbursement plan. Such a plan simply outlines what is eligible for for reimbursement, the substantiation required, and when the expenses must be substantiated. So unless a pastor's church-related business expenses are reimbursed by the church, the pastor's only option Uh, for tax benefit is to deduct them as a miscellaneous expense on Schedule A for 2017, but more about that later. Awesome. No, that's a really helpful background. So uh, maybe just tell us a little bit then, uh, how do those expense reimbursements translate into helping pastors save big? Yes. Well, let me let me share the first tax saving tip. If your church reimburses your expenses under an accountable plan, be sure you comply with that plan. It's just, it's just that simple. So, so how do you comply? Well, I would suggest there are three ways, and I'll just hit the, the high points, and I'd like to come back uh, to them quickly. But first, only submit items that constitute a church business expense, number one. Number two, substantiate the expenses submitted to the church. Keyword is substantiate. And then number three, submit the expenses for reimbursement in a timely fashion. It's just that simple. So so back to only submit items that constitute a church business expense. Some pastors, not the ones that would be listening on this podcast, but some pastors believe that every meal that a pastor eats with someone else automatically constitutes a business expense. Have you ever heard that, Vonna? It doesn't? <laughs> well, let me just give you an example. Um, if, if a pastor's on vacation and takes his or her old college buddy out for lunch, that probably doesn't qualify as a business expense. So no, every, every meal that a pastor eats doesn't qualify for a business expense. And then number two, substantiation. You know, especially for entertainment expenses, uh, following the five W's that we often talk about, about uh, is so important. You know, much of, of that is beyond what a credit card statement will reveal. So, so the first uh, W is why. Why does the entertainment qualify as a church business expense? Then what? Why what? When, where, who? What, what expenses were incurred? 
in detail, not in total, in detail. You know, we're not just talking about turning in the credit card summary, but the itemized listing of what was purchased. If we're talking about a meal, it would be the, the itemization of the meal or meals that, uh, that were ordered. Then when... When were the expenses incurred? Well, the credit card statement, uh, if we're talking about a credit card purchase, will will show that. Um, if it's in cash, well, of course, it's not going to. We don't have the credit card uh, report. Where where usually relates um, the, uh, to the destination of travel expenses, and then who who covers the name of those uh, for whom expenses were incurred? And so we're talking about a meal a detailed listing of everyone who, who ate the meal. And so, so the five W is why, what, when, where, and who. And, and sadly, in my experience, it is in the substantiation of the expenses where pastors often get sideways, sideways with their church and, and ministry, uh, ministry is lost too many times. Too many pastors think reporting the amount Maybe even the day the reporting of expenses equals substantiation, and and it does not. Well, and I think Dan, with that, um, because of all of the five W's that you've put there, just having a copy of the credit card statement isn't going to meet those requirements. That is that is exactly right, Vanna. Um, so uh, so back number three, submit the expenses for reimbursement in a timely fashion. What what does that mean? Well, that generally means. Uh, that the uh, that the expenses are submitted within 60 days after the expense is paid or incurred, and so so submitting only business expenses, substantiating them, and doing it in a timely fashion that that doesn't sound too hard. But when we get right down to the details, uh, we we often get hung up there. <laughs> Easier in theory, right? Right. Okay. So no, that's really helpful in terms of uh, what I'm hearing you say on our saving tip number one is to have those expenses reimbursed by the church uh, whenever that's possible. Uh, a follow-up question would be, and maybe this will get us into our second tip, is what happens in those situations where maybe a pastor is not reimbursed for expenses? Because I know that that does happen in many cases. Well, yes, uh, that does get us into tax saving tip number two. If your church-related business expenses were not reimbursed by your church in 2017, ask the church to begin using that concept effective with 2018. Say, why, why is that so important? You're talking very specific, uh, very specific dates. Well, that's because the miscellaneous deduction on Schedule A disappears on January 1, 2018 under tax reform. So for 2018, the use of an accountable expense reimbursement plan is is so important. Otherwise, a, a pastor will lose the benefit altogether. So it's either use the plan or lose lose the benefit. You know, a reimbursement was always better than taking a Schedule A deduction. Sometimes people talk about it as, oh, well, they'll get a reimbursement or take the deduction. It's all the same. No, not really, because reimbursements put an entire dollar back in the pastor's pocket, uh, whereas a deduction only puts a portion of a dollar based on the, the, the pastor's tax rate, income, and Social Security tax, maybe 20 to 40 percent. It only puts a portion of a dollar back in their pocket. And so, so reimbursements were always, were always the goal, um, but, but now for 2018, they are they're vital. Very good. So, so what you're saying then is just for this this uh, this current tax year, for those pastors that were not reimbursed under an accountable plan, there is a possibility maybe of deducting some of those expenses this current year. Yes, absolutely. Super. Well, hey, that's very helpful in getting us started with our, our tips one and two. Uh, Vana, maybe you can get us going here with our third tip. I know that one of the really unique uh, tax rules for pastors, it can be extremely confusing, uh, but it's the treatment as uh, self-employed for Social Security tax purposes, even though pastors are uh, usually considered employees for income tax purposes. Maybe tell us a little bit about why that is a disadvantage for many pastors and how uh, pastors and churches can really work together to help save a little bit here on the pastor's tax bill. Absolutely. Well, Michael, I do think this is really confusing for ministers and churches alike. Uh, pastors are treated as employees for reporting purposes, and they receive a W-2 form. 
However, they're treated as self-employed for Social Security taxes. Um, can't get simpler than that, right? <laughs> so just as a little background, Social Security taxes are collected in one of two ways. Uh, the first is through FICA, which most of us think about, and that's where the employer pays one half of the tax and the employee pays the other half. The second method is through a method called SICA, which is the way that self-employed people um, would pay their Social Security taxes. And when that happens, they are fully responsible for the entire amount as that self-employed person. And this really creates that tax disadvantage that you were referring to for the minister. Properly handling this is super important, and the correct reporting for that is as well. And we'll actually be doing another podcast that you were just talking about with the church reporting refreshers, and I would really encourage people to listen to that as well for those reporting tips. But the tax disadvantage that we were talking about leads us to tax savings tip number three. Three, and that's that churches may be able to help ministers with that SICA tax through a SICA tax allowance. Uh, in this way, the church could choose to pay the minister its half of that Social Security tax. Now, the thing that I want people to keep in mind is that that amount, if they pay that half to the minister, that's fully taxable for both income tax and Social Security tax purposes. Uh, because of that, some churches may choose to actually gross that amount up a little bit to even cover the, the tax on the tax, if you will. Uh, but if the minister were a standard employee, the church would be paying that half anyway. And so it's reasonable to consider this option to help out the minister. Uh, I would also say that as the housing allowance continues to come under fire, uh, any ways that we can help ministers with their tax liability should be considered. And this is really a simple way to help them financially in that way. So I, I would encourage a church to consider that, maybe ministers to speak with their churches about that. But as we speak of the housing allowance, I kind of segue into that. Michael, we've often said that the housing exclusion is the pastor's best friend for tax purposes. Can you maybe help us round out our five tax tips by talking about the housing exclusion and maybe some savings ideas that even some some of those that are veterans in this area haven't considered? Yeah, absolutely. No, that is that's a perfect transition into our last couple of tax saving tips here that are related to the housing exclusion. Uh, and like Vanna mentioned, um, we have historically said that the housing exclusion is the best friend of pastors for tax purposes. Um, and again, we do say that historically, uh, just as a note here, because of the pending court challenges that are going on to the housing exclusion that we'll talk about more here in a moment. But most listeners are probably aware that under current law, pastors who are considered men ministers who meet those requirements for tax purposes, um, they can exclude for income tax purposes both the rent-free use of a church parsonage, so if they're living in church-provided housing, or the amount that they use to provide their own home within certain limits, and those limits are beyond the scope of the podcast, but that's kind of the general rule, and that's probably review for most of us. Um, let me just offer here a couple of tax-saving tips from our experience in working with a lot of pastors that maybe even, as Vanna said, some vet veterans haven't considered. Um, and the first, and this is tax-saving tip number four, for those pastors who live in church-provided housing, which we often refer to as a parsonage, if certain housing related expenses like maybe utilities and furnishings, uh, some of those side expenses, if those are the responsibility of the pastor, the pastor can also have a housing allowance that's designated from them from their salary to cover these items used to provide the home. So even if they're living in church provided housing, they can still have that housing allowance. Uh, so not just the rent free use of the parsonage is considered tax free for income tax purposes, but so is that additional allowance to cover other expenses. So that would be tax saving tip number four is just making sure those who are in a parsonage situation are fully utilizing a housing allowance. And that really leads us to the final um, tax saving tip here, which is number five. And this is for all pastors. And that is to, um, to really be sure to factor in all the possible expenses that are eligible for exclusion when having the allowance amount set by the church. Um, I was actually just talking to a pastor the other day who thought that their housing allowance designation um, could only include their monthly mortgage payments. And so it was a, it was a great little gift <laughs> to be able to share with them that there's some other expenses that can qualify as well. I imagine you became their hero. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> Became the best friend of that pastor. So, um, but it actually made me think as well, too, just thinking about the resources that we create here at ECFA, that uh, we do talk about that, actually, in our latest tax guide and ministers' taxes made easy. Um, we include a helpful checklist of those expenses that are eligible for the housing allowance exclusion. And again, those include utilities, landscaping, furnishing, property taxes, and more. So even maybe some veterans in this area uh, could benefit from that. So um, really just, again, to note here that it's especially important to utilize the housing exclusion to the fullest extent this year because of that case that we mentioned that's working its way through the federal courts. And we don't know what that, his, uh, the future, I should say, we don't know what the, the future of the housing exclusion looks like. So that really wraps up our five tax saving tips for pastors. And we've referred to uh, frequently here throughout the podcast to the free Minister's Taxes Made Easy uh, ebook. And so we're going to take a quick break here for uh, Tracy from our church engagement team to tell us more about how you can access this helpful resource. And then as we promised, come back with a quick word about tax reform and some more useful helps from ECFA. Hey, thanks so much, Michael. And it truly is ECFA's heart to take the headache out of filing your tax return as a pastor. The Minister's Taxes Made Easy ebook, with its clear explanations of IRS guidelines and step by step instructions, is designed to help you prepare your federal tax return and navigate the maze of unique rules for ministers, including the housing allowance, Social Security, and more. It is available free to anyone by connecting to the Church Excel community at churchexcel.org and clicking on the electronic tax guides icon from your dashboard. And for a deeper dive into the topic, ECFA's 2018 Zondervan Minister's Tax and Financial Guide by Dan, John, Vanna, and Michael is easy to understand. It includes money-saving strategies, the latest tax law changes, and the latest information on health care issues. A free copy will be coming to all of our member churches, and you can also order a copy through our resources page at ecfa.church. We pray these resources are a blessing to you. And Michael, let's get back to the podcast and more great tax information for pastors. All right. Hey, thank you so much, Tracy. Um, As we said, thousands of pastors um, have taken advantage of our Minister's Taxes Made Easy ebook uh, each year. And so we're thrilled to offer this again as another free resource here at ECFA. You can email podcast at ecfa.org if you need help at all accessing this great tool for your church. Uh, But before we close out, we have mentioned some major changes that are on the horizon, not just for taxes for ministers, but really on a major scale in the United States with the recent passage of tax reform. Uh, so, Dan, you've been here uh, here at ECFA helping us lead the charge for years and keeping a close eye on tax reform. It's been talked about for a long time, and here we are. Um, and this is really a big deal and the sort of thing that only happens once once in a generation, really. So uh, maybe can you give our listeners here just a quick snapshot of some of the most significant changes that are coming uh, to the tax law starting even this year in 2018? Absolutely. There are four big changes that will impact pastors under tax reform. Number one, the standard deduction. Some pastors currently use the standard deduction. Some do not. They, they itemize on Schedule A. But under, the, under tax reform, more ministers will use the standard deduction than ever before. So the standard deduction for a couple married filing jointly will go from $12,700 a year to $24,000. And so you can see it would take a lot of charitable contributions, mortgage interest, real estate taxes, and so on to get to $24,000. That's why uh, more pastors will be using the standard deduction than, than ever before. So number one, the standard deduction. Number two, personal exemptions. Personal exemptions that appear on page two of the form 1040 there at the top, they go away entirely. They disappear. And so for 2017, the personal exemption was $4,050 per individual. So how much would that, will that impact a pastor? Well, it depends on how many people are in the, in the family unit. So if a, a pastor and spouse have four children, 
Um, well, that'd be six times four thousand fifty dollars. So, so tax reform giveth on the increased standard deduction, and tax reform taketh away when it comes to personal exemption. So that's number two. Number three, income tax rates are adjusted. Many pastors' highest income tax bracket will be twelve percent under tax reform, in addition to the fifteen point three. Social Security tax rate um, as uh, under under SICA. So the question is, will these new rates be enough to offset the loss of personal exemptions and the change in the standard deduction? And and the answer is, I don't know. I don't know. And then finally, number four, the elimination of the miscellaneous deduction section on Schedule A that we discussed earlier. So those are the fa- five, the four big changes under under tax reform, and it it simply it, it simply highlights the importance for pastors to project their income and their taxes for 2018. It'll be more important than it's ever been because a a pastor might get significantly behind on paying federal income taxes and self employment. Uh, Social Security taxes if if they don't uh, project uh, the impact of tax reform for 2018. Hmm. Well, thanks so much. Those are some really, really great insights, Dan. Uh, And as you know at ECFA and those who are listening who know us well, we never like to leave folks without a resource (laughs) whenever we can help. Uh, And so on this note, we have a special webinar that's available with more in-depth discussion on all the most important changes in tax reform that are impacting churches and ministries, their teams and their givers, um, well beyond what we're able to cover in the podcast today. And this webinar uh, is available now uh, at ecfa.church slash events. So you can take advantage of the webinar there. Well, here as we close out the podcast, we're running short on our time here and closing out. Uh, one of my favorite traditions here is uh, just wrapping up our time with some inspiration and encouragement for those that are uh, tuning in today. So, Vana, what's encouraging to you uh, as we think about beginning a new year as leaders in ministry? Michael, as funny as it seems, uh, change and uncertainty encourage me as we approach the new year. And I know that sounds funny to say, but by that, I mean that when we are comfortable as people, we don't change. Um, And at ECFA, we look at serving ministries who reach people with the gospel and the uncertainty of tax reform and charitable contributions and politics and natural disasters and conflict domestically and globally, I think that raises an awareness of our lack of control as individuals and creates uh, just a receptivity to the gospel that doesn't exist when things are smooth. Um, Those things certainly present challenges, but it's a great time for us to come together as a body, to link arms in ministry and do what God has called us to do, maybe in ways that we haven't even considered before. And now we have to consider them because of change and uncertainty. So there's just a newness and a freshness about that. And that to me is exciting and encouraging as we face the new year. That actually gets me excited as well. (laughs) So thanks for that encouragement and, uh, Just a really positive uh, perspective on change, which I think is so good. Um, Well, and thank you too, Dan, uh, for your insights today as we covered these five tax-saving tips uh, for pastors. And of course, thank you also to all those who took time today from your busy schedules to join us for the podcast. Uh, Maybe you're in the office, you're on the go. We just appreciate you being with us. Uh, We'd love your help spreading the word about this resource, this podcast from ECFA. Uh, So be sure to take just a couple minutes to rate and review the podcast on iTunes or maybe share it on social media. Uh, And until next time, you can stay connected with us through Facebook and Twitter and on our website at ecfa.church. If you have any questions regarding today's podcast or any of the resources that we mentioned, you can always email us at podcast at ecfa.org. Well, until next time, God bless you. And we look forward to being with you again soon for another Excellence in Church Administration podcast. 